Good morning guys and welcome back. I am showing you a picture of the beautiful Delaware River. Uh, it's about a mile from our house. You see it's zero degrees out there so I have been spending a lot more time in the house decluttering and I wanted to show you how I took this very large can of string beans and turned it into this and as you will see, I made this for a specific purpose. I am putting the spare roll of toilet paper in here. So if you're just joining me, or if you haven't seen me in a couple of weeks, I have finally added a link to a whole Amazon store down below. The first thing that I did with this can was I used a metal base coat spray over it because that bathroom can get humid and you would be surprised how quickly these cans can rust and ruin your work. The second thing that I did, was, which is what you're seeing me do right here, is I took some clay. Now I did base coat the top of a coffee can, spray painted that with a plastic base coat, otherwise nothing would stick to it. There are several different types of air dry clay for you to work with. I used a clay that I'm not too wild about for this particular project. It's a beautiful air dry porcelain clay, just not good for this project. So if you see some imperfections towards the end of the video, that's what's going on with that. So here's what I did. I am taking no matter which air dry clay, I am taking a roller and I am rolling out a round ball of the air dry clay. I have very heavy plastic over the top of it so that nothing sticks. Some people use baby powder or you can use cornstarch. It just makes everything less sticky in general. Then I took, as you can see, the lid and I pressed the clay all around the side. Then you just want to continue to smooth it out. You can add a little water if you'd like and press it all around the can so that you've got a nice surface. And you do need to do this because nothing will stick to plastic. So you need the base coat first and then the clay over top. That clay took 24 hours to dry. Since the base coat on the metal can dried within about an hour, I was able to start work on this right away. So I am taking Deco Art, the matte decoupage glue, and you can't use a sponge brush because this is very coarse material, it will destroy that. But more importantly, you wanna make sure you use a bristle brush, one that might be a little bit beat up because you wanna get that decoupage glue down into all of those nooks and crannies that are inside of the burlap. I was going to use this burlap for another project, which is why you see those lines in there, but they disappear. The first thing you want to do is apply the decoupage glue over the surface of the can. Then you press the burlap down over it. Make sure you're only working in sections at a time. I started on the back here where that seam is because I wanted to hide that seam a little bit. And this way you don't have to get too carried away about taking the glue off of the can. You know when you take the label off and there's a little bit of that gooey stuff stuck on there? Got as much of that off as I could, but I thought I'm really not going to sweat that because I'm going to cover it up anyway and this is so thick this material that it covered up that little bit of lumpiness that was on there and you just want to repeat this all around the can just work in small sections and you don't have to wait for each section to dry just continue to add more glue and for this project you're really going to need a lot of decoupage glue in my case 
you guys that watch me often know that I have a very heavy hand. So I put a lot of glue on here because you see all of those ridges. You really need to fill all of that in with the decoupage glue. And then when you press this burlap down, you wanna pull it a little bit tightly so that there aren't any lumps in here and you, you pull it and you press it down and you just keep working like this until you finish the whole can. When I got about halfway around the can, I really wanted to go back to the very first part because you see it was starting to pull up a little bit. I needed a little bit more security over here. So what I did was I added a bunch of decoupage glue right here. Now, because I'm using a bristle brush, you can see I'm really pushing the decoupage glue down in between those fibers. So that's why I said you might wanna use a beat up chip brush if you want also. It does matter which kind of decoupage glue you use. And I have found that with the Deco Art decoupage glue, this is the matte finish. And when I was done, this still maintained the matte finish. After I finished this one section, I did let it dry for a while. First of all, I wanted to make sure that it stuck properly, but I also wanted to be able to turn it over and have it not stick to the table and finish the rest of my piece. So that's what I did. So now that I'm done with the whole can, you see there's some excess down there on the bottom. This excess I'm going to cut away. But what's on the bottom, I want to leave there. So I'm going to glue this down and I'm going to put a heavy sheet of plastic over it. And you can use a book here. I'm really using this whole ream of copy paper because it was handy <laughs> and it's very heavy. So this is all dry now. I'm just taking some fabric scissors here and I'm going to cut away this excess as neatly as I can. And now I'm going to add a strip of lace here. So what I did was I used this craft bond because I did not want to decoupage this on here. If you were to decoupage this over here, the lace kind of gets lost completely, which is why I suggest you use either Fabri-Tac or this craft bond. And as you can see, I have a wider band of lace that I'm putting around the center, and I'm just going to tack it down right here on this seam. You can see how that other lace already disappeared a little bit, but at least it does cover up that rough edge. So I'm just going to tack this down here, pull the other end around and tack it down, overlapping it a tiny bit. And after I was done gluing this down again, I took a heavy sheet of plastic and I put the ream of paper back over it. I did have to put a couple of things on each side so that the can wouldn't roll, but I let this dry. So while that dries, I'm going to show you how I made the top. And I have these silk flowers that I took off of the stem. I removed this hard plastic and I snipped that one piece off that was sticking out. There's no wire in there, so it's pretty easy to cut. But I do want to make sure to keep this one piece of greenery on here. So I just put some hot glue on here and put the greenery back on. Then I took some of the leaves off of that same plant and I cut one leaf off of each side because I wanted to make a nest out of this and just go around the surface of the top. And I am hot gluing 
these leaves over the surface and I'm following the circular pattern of the top of the can and this is why we had to use the clay over the surface. You could not have gotten these to stick to the plastic surface. Uh, even with the paint on it, I found that the, the base coat for plastic can sometimes chip off. So I went around here, made a little bit of a nest. And I took my large silk flower and I hot glued that down on top of that so it looks a little more like a nest. And then I played around with the bird a little bit to see what the best place would be for me to hot glue this into. That didn't sound like proper grammar, <laughs> but you know what I mean. And then I just fluffed the flower out a little bit more. And now here is what the top of our container looks like. There are just a couple of things left to do with the can. And that was to just cut the lace away carefully so that I had a nice straight edge there. Now I'm going to add some of these flowers and this vine along the side here. I got this in the scrapbooking section of a store. I'll see if I can add them to my Amazon store. And I made sure to play around with the placement first before I hot glued them down. For this vine, because it was a one-dimensional piece of paper, I wanted to add the glue so that I didn't have the lumpy hot glue on there. Plus, I would have burnt myself. Okay guys, so here is the reason I made this. You can see that's an extra large roll of toilet paper that I put inside of there. And I'm spinning this around to see how it looks so that the bird is facing the right way along with the flowers that I put on there. And here is a better look at the whole piece. You can see I'm kind of not happy with the edge here of the top part, but you can get a better idea as you look at this from a distance now how it all looks. I'm loving that beautiful little bird up there. You know, while I was looking at this, I thought it needed one more thing as far as decorations go. So I added another small strip of the lace up around the top. And I had some heat bond on hand, so I tried using the heat bond. It's really up to you. I didn't want to decoupage the lace on, as I mentioned, but you can use Fabri-Tac. You can use the glue that I mentioned, or you can use a heat bond. It really depends on what you're the most comfortable with. So the very last thing to do here, after I pull away this excess paper from the heat bond, is I need to put a piece of felt down here on the bottom. And since I did not have any adhesive fleece, I took a regular piece of felt, I'm sorry, not fleece, felt, and I drew a circle using the bottom of the can little larger than I needed and then I cut off all the excess and I used fabric glue to put it all around the bottom and now our toilet paper holder is all done although you can use this container for anything that you would like. 
This was a necessity for me. It's one of the reasons that I titled my first book, Upcycle with Decoupage, and why my Facebook page is called Upcycle with Decoupage. Because whenever I need something, I tend to decorate it from something that I already have, or I will create it from something I already have. So my friends, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for subscribing. I will see you next week with another video the links are down below including the link to my ebook successful decoupage every time which has links in it that will take you to videos that can help you with some of the questions that you have all right my friends i will see you next week with another video take it easy guys bye bye